everybody, Dr. Jamie here, and you are about to listen to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I hope you enjoy the tips and advice in this segment. Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie here with the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience, and today I am sitting with Sapna Shah, parenting expert with We Go Kids, ParentTalk.tv, and we just got done with a full 60-minute episode of talking about everything parenting, literally everything parenting. You've got to catch the episode. And these questions were not my questions today. All of them were questions that viewers and listeners uh, wanted me to ask her live on the show. And I did. And there were so many questions. We didn't get to them all. So we are going to go into the ones that we didn't get on that show right now here in this audio. Sapna, welcome back to the Dr. Jamie Show. Thanks so much, Jamie. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We had a great time. Um, People were asking Asking so many questions. One that we didn't get to, and this is sort of a serious one. I'd love to hear your responses to this. Do you have any tips on talking with your child about their parent being diagnosed with cancer? So in all aspects of communication with children, I tell parents to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to build a, a really strong foundation of trust in a parent-child relationship. Uh, depending on the age, I would say share with them whatever you think they're developmentally able to process give them as much as information as you can without promising them things that you can't fulfill um and then kids need time to process so be sure to let them know that whenever they have questions even later on that they should come to you you don't want them going to other people for answers mm-hmm. or going jumping on the internet yeah i was gonna say answers. googling like something with cancer is gonna be yes. terrible yes absolutely so you start that conversation leave it open-ended and then give them tools for processing their emotions be transparent with your own and tell them look sometimes i'm going to be crying and i'm going to be crying because of this and this is what it means and give them tools to be able to deal with their own emotions if you're scared come to me and let's talk about it if you're upset or you want to cry it's okay it won't upset me come and let's be together Mm -hmm. those were excellent tips I love them I mean I also think being hopeful you know sometimes we hear the word cancer even ourselves as adults and we almost think of it as a doomsday but thankfully we have amazing doctors in this country um, and we have found a lot of ways to help heal and you know a lot of people survive cancer so almost putting it to a child especially the younger ones in a very hopeful uh, type way and it's important for the cancer patient themselves to stay really positive yes so look to your kids look for the light in their eyes and the spirit that uh, you know a child brings and, and definitely stay positive okay that's a great point okay daily gratitude is it important to stay grateful as a parent, even though it's hell and chaos some of the times? <laughs> <laughs> Daily gratitude is the, one of the only things that can get you through the day. I am so true. Uh, <laughs> I am grateful that you didn't spit on me today <laughs> or didn't yeah. throw up your lunch on yes, me. Yes, I'm glad the diarrhea stayed in your diaper and not on my hand. Yes, I've been there. Okay. Yeah. Teaching, uh, teaching kids uh, regular gratitude will not only help them, but it will help you as well. I play a gratitude game with uh, my triplets who are now five years old. I started it when they were three. Okay. And we actually do it several times a day. So if we go to the grocery store, um, it's on the car on the ride home. If we go to a play date, if we go to a class, when we get in the car and we're buckled up, we start the gratitude game. So I say... I am so grateful that we just had this play date. I loved that, you know, this person shared with you and that any good behavior, Mm -hmm. acknowledge any good behavior. Talk about the time spent. Uh, I loved spending time with our friends and then use your child's name. What are you grateful for? And then they get the opportunity once they're done saying what they're grateful for to ask them uh, to ask another person in the car if they are. And it really puts a positive spin and helps them focus on the positive thing that just happened nice. instead of waiting until the end of the day. And then they don't usually don't remember. Yeah, absolutely. And you're highlighting the good things that happened. You know, one of the things, and this is a little bit off gratitude, but one of the things that I do with the boys is I will thank them when they're doing something good that normally normally I don't 
okay, that I wouldn't want them to do otherwise. So kind of hard to explain, but let me give you an example. Yesterday I was working and Blake knew I was working in the other room and that I had some calls I had to take. He was watching his little minions or despicable me, whatever it was on the TV. And he had it low out of respect for me. So I came out and I said to him, Blake, thank you so much for not blasting the TV because usually I'm saying, Blake, turn the TV down. So instead of saying something negative, I complimented almost in a reverse psychology type way, you know, don't turn the TV up, but at the same time, thank you for not turning the TV up. Um, so I think sort of making sure that we're not always saying to our kids, no, and don't do that, yeah. that we're finding ways to praise them. I'm a big proponent of catching them when they're doing something positive and to really making a bigger deal out of it than when they're doing something negative. Excellent, I love it. Okay, so uh, the last question I wanna ask you on the audio today, are what tips do you have for parents who want to build their child's social and emotional intelligence? So one of the things before I was a mom, I worked in corporate HR and uh, my job was to go into organizations and under, uh, really assess the emotional intelligence in the organization, hire people who had EI traits that we didn't necessarily have in house, and then implement and develop training programs for those employees that were already in the organization. So when I had triplets, even though I had no idea what I was doing as a mom, I went to my comfort zone, which is that social and emotional intelligence space and started figuring out my own emotions and then understanding and teaching the triplets how to understand, process, and communicate their own emotions. So a couple of the things that I recommend parents do, one, uh, which you can start on day one, okay. is skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. There's lots of documented medical benefits to it, but the impact on emotional learning is really extraordinary. Okay. I so what do you mean? Does that mean like hugging your child or is that, what, what does that mean? For newborn to six, age six, it's actually skin to skin. So a mom wears a tank top or a dad wears a- No a, shirt. No shirt. <laughs> and then the child lays on your chest within only a diaper. I say you spend 15 minutes and the role of the parent during that time is to simply deep, deeply breathe. Okay. And what it does is it really starts plants the seed for conscious breathing for that child to understand what that means. Excellent. Uh, the second one is baby sign language. I recommend that as soon as a child turns three months old, there are lots of great free, really great programs at local libraries. Okay. Give your child a tool to start communicating with you even when they're not developmentally ready to talk. Okay. They can, uh, they can communicate with you at earlier ages and baby sign language is a really great way of doing that. Okay. The third uh, is plan your day around music. Ah, I like to do that as an adult. Is that is that okay? Absolutely. It's really motivating. Pick a great soundtrack. Do it when you're pregnant. Um, I hear a lot of parents who have younger, oh, who have children, have a really hard time transitioning them from one activity to another. So, okay, it's time to stop playing and time time to start cleaning up or it's time to wind down and take a nap or it's time to get to the table to eat. Well, if you plan your day around music and give them the same music before as transition, it gives them a rhythm to their day to know what to expect. I next. love that. And if they listen to our 60 minute Dr. Jamie audio, you and I were singing Little Bunny Foo Foo oh. hopping through the forest. So uh, our segment was built around music. So. That's right. <laughs> I have nothing against Barney, but pick music that you love as a parent and yes. not that only your child is Probably love. not Tupac, so for those of you <laughs> right. out there, but, but, um, I, you know, whatever, it's your, it's your child. So. <laughs> Um, can you give us one more? I know you've got a lot of tips. Um, yeah. We're going to have to have you on again. So share with us one more uh, tip on building a child's social and emotional intelligence. So uh, I am a big proponent of keeping kids screen free until three. Okay. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children be uh, screen free at least until two. Every year we go kids participate, which is my the company that I founded. We participate in national screen free week. The science is slow to catch up with the impact of screen time on children, but there's some really recent studies that are showing 
you know, large increases in de depression, suicide, over medication, attention disorders, weight issues, and significant emotional declines. So to build your child's emotional intelligence from the very beginning, they are going to learn more from you about being a human than they are going to from any app or any TV show that they can watch on a screen. That's excellent. Um, you know, we talked a lot about that actually on the Dr. Jamie show, our segment with you, Subna. So yes. um, listeners, I really encourage encourage you to jump on that segment uh, and listen to it. So many, so much information from children that are zero uh, to children that are 16, 17, and they're entitled, and you're talking birds and bees, and you're talking drugs. We've talked about all of it on the show. Sapna, thank you so much for joining us again on the Dr. Jamie Show. Thanks for having me, Jamie. Everyone, you are listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience with Sapna Shaw, parenting expert with We Go Kids, parenttalk.tv. Do me a favor, go to YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, review the Dr. Jamie show. Every review, every like, every follow, every subscribe keeps bringing back amazing guests like Sapna. And go ahead and comment below with your biggest takeaway from this particular episode. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice given on today's segment. Do me a favor and go to iTunes and my YouTube and please subscribe to that channel. Every subscribe, every like, every follow helps the Dr. Jamie Show grow so that we can bring you the best guest and the best content possible. And of course, as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave that as well. Talk to you soon.